Hey everybody, I'm Kristen Baldwin from Entertainment Weekly and I'm here live at New York Comic Con and I'm here with Jamila Jamil, host of The Misery Index, which is a crazy new game show on TBS. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the premise? It's basically where you can make a fortune from other people's stupid misfortunes. And so you have a scale of 1 to 100, and you have all of these real-life miserable events that happen, and you just have to figure out where they land on this scale. And if you get it right, you win $30,000, and you get advised. You get to hang out with the tenderloins yes. who advise you in order to make the right decision, hopefully. Well, and that's, you know, I was going to ask you, what makes, you know, the tenderloins, obviously, from Impractical Jokers, they know a lot about misery mm -hmm. and about making each other miserable. What about you? What makes you a good host for something about uh, the enjoyment and profit from other people's misery? Well, I'm English, so I'm just... <laughs> Miserable, uh, anyway, by nature. <laughs> and also, with the only way that we cope with our own misery is to laugh through it. That's very, very, very British. And so this really appealed to me. And the fact that it's not cruel humor, we're just laughing at old-fashioned slapstick. Yeah. People sexting their grandmothers by mistake. We've all been there. Uh, and I think that it's great to have a show like this. It's a show that brings people together. It's a show that friends are going to want to watch together. Everyone's going to argue over it. Uh, the audience was screaming and arguing throughout the whole thing. It was chaos. It was so much fun. Well, it is kind of something you, you would do with your friends anyway. Like, which is worse? You snorting your grandfather's mm -hmm. ashes because you thought it was cocaine? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, what's another one of my favorites? Um, having to get a prostate exam in public, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So. There was this one woman who oh, I love this so much. She, she'd she been really ill for about a week. And then after the end of the week, she wanted to send her husband a sexy text uh, with a picture of her in lingerie to let him know that she was feeling better. So she sent it accidentally to his family group text. And no one responded for about 24 hours. And finally, his mother responded saying, glad to see you're feeling better, Caitlin. Oh, my <laughs> God. So good. See, the secondary embarrassment, even just hearing yeah. about that, is so painful. No, I know. It makes you sweat. Yeah. Yeah. And so you've, uh, you know, hosted before. You were on radio. You've mm -hmm. been, uh, what's the sort of skill set needed to be a good game show host? You have to, I mean, I used to be a teacher, and that came in really handy because there's a lot of talent on the stage. You know, you've got four comedians, and then you've got two contestants and there's so much happening and there's a live audience you have to be able to tell people to shut the fork up you know what I mean <laughs> like you have to be able to keep everyone in line and keep everything going and be impartial and so I felt all of my old teacher instincts I'm controlling like four Italian American men in their 40s right. this is not easy no and so uh, yeah it's but great fortunately I mean uh, they must be afraid of you like terrified they've seen my Twitter <laughs> <laughs> So they and, know. Yeah, and, and we really love each other, and it was really fun, and it was really nice to just be able to participate in the humor and just have have it come back at you so strong. They're so naturally funny. Yeah. Yeah. And they definitely, you know, they seem very uh, uh, well-versed in misery, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, they have no shame or dignity. So if you were going to be... Uh, submitting a miserable event from your life mm -hmm. to be on to be something that the contestants would have to judge where it falls on the misery index what right. would it be uh i mean i i got chased by a bee into a car and then got hit by another car and broke my back oh my pretty God. bad <laughs> really like, bad. yeah yeah but you know so i didn't get to walk again for a year and a half but i also got very strong painkillers and ice cream every day so where does that land on the misery index? That's right, because of the four pillar or three pillars of misery: physical pain, emotional, emotional trauma, trauma, and long-term psychological, psychological impact. impact. Yeah. I feel like you know you're definitely physical pain, probably mm -hmm. a lot. Well, uh, yeah, at the time, uh, emotional trauma, kind of, but I was 17 and an idiot, so I was all right. <laughs> and long-term psychological impact. Basically, I just use it as an excuse to not do adventurous things in sex. So, you know, I use it to my advantage when I need it. All right. So, so like, I can't because of the injury 13 well, years ago. So yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it probably wasn't like on Twitter at the time. That's the thing. Like, misery in the era of social media mm. is like even worse, yeah, I think. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and so what uh, what are some other sort of situations that people can look forward to uh, or look forward to cringing at uh, that we will see on the show? There was a, a penis cut off um, <laughs> in a way that was still funny, unbelievably. Terrible things happen to balls on this show. Uh, there is a woman who has explosive diarrhea when she reaches orgasm every time. So 
Yeah, that was pretty intense. Some men won't have to worry about that. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> and <laughs> this isn't appropriate, no, is it? It's fine. Okay. It's um, yeah, there's just it's so remarkable what human beings are capable of. Right. Robberies gone wrong, affairs gone wrong. It's amazing how stupid we all are, myself included. And you know, the show. You know, I've said this before. We don't punch down. We just right. punch each other or punch ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> and I really like that. I would imagine that the research for the show must be kind of fun in terms of trying to find examples of what's miserable. Enough. Everything comes from the UK and Florida. All of the disasters, <laughs> everything. The UK and Florida. That's true. I mean, the first uh, two words of any good news story are usually Florida man. Yes, I agree. I agree. And um, yeah. So you just got to... Sorry, Florida. I, every show I do seems to expose you. <laughs> Um, obviously, we will also need to ask about The Good Place, uh, which is in its final season. What, uh, how did you find out, what did, how did Mike Schur tell you uh, that the show was coming to an end, and what do you remember about how you felt at that time? He did it like any good breakup, over email. <laughs> That's how, he, that's how he told us that this show of our dreams was coming to an end. He emailed us all in a group email and just said, uh, guys, I love you, but I think it's time to pull the plug because this show is, you know, it's super high concept and we've seen what happens when people let super high concept yeah. shows go on too long and they lose their way and they disappear up their own bum holes. So <laughs> it means that he wanted to end the show with the dignity that the fans deserve and it's a perfect ending. It's devastating, but it's really good. So even though you feel good about it now, even though at the time, you know, he sent oh, you a group yeah. email. Oh, yeah, I was disgusted, furious. No, I agreed with him. <laughs> I agreed with him. You know, like, I, you know, in, in British humor, like in British comedy, we tend to leave things because we, you know, we're all right. cowards. And so we never want to risk failure. So we leave things always too early. So even four seasons seemed like an amazing amount to me. And he made the right call. And I had a feeling that was coming because I know that Mike Scher does not need more money. And that is normally the reason that people <laughs> take things too far. So. Right, and so yeah. it's always better to end on a, on a high note. Yeah, well. leave while there are still people at the party. Right, right. Uh, well, Tahani would agree with that, right? Oh, so. yeah, for sure. Or she'd be throwing the party. <laughs> and mm -hmm. so uh, have you wrapped, you've watched, wrapped all episodes of Misery Index? Yep, finished Misery Index, finished The Good Place. Now just waiting for it all to air on TV. And what's next for you? What are you going to do to relax? Well, I just signed a book deal. Oh, wow, That's Congrats. exciting. Thanks, and I'm launching a company. I have this uh, Instagram account called iWay, which yeah. is an activism account, and we're turning it into a full activism platform and website to help young marginalized people. That's excellent. Thanks. So you've got that to focus on. Yeah. That's really good. And then hopefully I'll be doing more Misery Index and I guess we'll see what happens. I never have a plan. Like right. I didn't know that I was going to become an actor and I definitely didn't know I was going to be the be on the world's most disgusting game show <laughs> after that and I would fall in love with it. And so now I don't know what I'm going to do next, but I've never had a plan. So it's worked out for you so far. Yeah, I'm so happy. I could do I could do 100 years of this show. All right. Genuinely, it's really fun. Probably helps keep your life in perspective. Like, oh, okay, my yeah. life's pretty good. Yeah, compared. I don't know. I've done some really dumb shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel a real affinity with these people. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll bring people together. Well, thank you so much for being here. Uh, and Misery Index is coming to TBS. And stay tuned to EW.com for more from New York Comic Con.